Someone asked me the other day to share with them the values of resistors and capacitors that I keep in stock. I kind of started to list some capacitors and the resistors out for him in this uh, response and, and I thought, well hell with it, I'll just make a video about it. I'm going to look, look at the values of capacitors first because that's what I have right in front of me. Now here's my little capacitor bin. You can see I have uh, 50 pico farads, 100 pico, 150, 200. Now a lot of these I got um, kind of by accident in a, in a large purchase and I don't think I would stock all of these if I was going to restock. I would probably restock like um, the 100 picos, uh, 500 pico, that's a very common value, a .001 uh, and the ones that I stock are these and these come from Antique Electronic Supply. These are uh, polypropylene capacitors and they are pretty good. I've had a lot of good luck with these. They're rated at 630 volts. They've just always done a good job for me so I've continued to buy them. And plus they're really inexpensive. Uh, you can spend a lot of money on capacitors or you can spend very little money. Some of the ones you spend very little money on um, aren't all that good but these actually um, you know they're fairly generic but they they seem to do the job just fine uh, but this is what I would this is what I would propose stocking if you're just gonna stock a few capacitors for everyday use probably I would even skip the 100 if um, if you're just starting out get a 500 because those are used in uh, bright caps a lot um, so get a, a handful of 500 picos you'll, you'll need 001, 002, 005 uh, sometimes these will be like 0047 and these will be 0022 but they're basically the same thing so um, but yeah those three um, a 0 .01 0 .015 is not all that common of a value anymore but I've got a few old ones uh, just pulls from various things that were still good I, I presume um, 0 .02 is a very common capacitor so you'll want to stock quite a few of those 0 .01 is also very common so stock a few of those and the more the more of these you stock usually the better discount you get uh, through most parts places 0 0.05 is also a super common value anything above 0 0.05 or 0 0.047 basically the same thing for for most purposes um, anything above that is, you're going to use less of so you'll want to stock less of it but you still every now and then will use uh, use one 0.1 is a capacitor that you will sometimes use. It's not uh, too common in tube guitar amps, uh, but you will sometimes see them. 0.2 is not common hardly at all. 0.5 is, you hardly ever see those either. Uh, you do see 0.68s quite a lot, and they're going to be a lot larger of a capacitor. 0.68 are used in Marshall style amplifiers a lot for the first stage bypass capacitor. So you'll want to stock a couple of those. All right, well, I'll show you what I, where I put my stuff. I may keep this organization, I may not. But I've got, you know, a few parts bins here. These are my resistor bins. Here's another one here. Like I said, you can buy stuff in bulk like this. And if you buy it in bulk, you get a lot more for your money. We'll look at electrolytic capacitors in a, in a minute. Okay, as far as resistors, um, you can probably kind of see most of these. But you'll want, uh, this is the way I've organized mine. I have 1K and 1.5K here in the same little little slot. Uh, these are two, yeah, red, black. Those are just 2K. Um, I have 3.3K, but those are rarely used. Uh, you could probably skip that on your first order if you really, if you really wanted to. Um, 4.7. K is uh, is fairly common. 6.2 um, is somewhat common. Um, 10K uh, you'll definitely want to stock. 15K is kind of uncommon. You know I stock them all, but uh, the most common are going to be by far um, 1K, 1.5K because those are used in 12AX7 uh, biasing a lot. Those two values. A 2.2K Something, something along in, in those lines um, are used in biasing sometimes as well for 12AX7s. 2.2 uh, is fairly common. 4.7, 10K, 
10, uh, 20K, uh, 47K is common, 68K. These two are used on uh, for input resistors quite a lot. Uh, you see 100Ks all over the place. Plate resistors are very common uh, using 100K. 220K is very common. 470K is super common. Order, or a, order a lot of those. Uh, 680K, not so much. 1 meg is super common. Order a lot of 1 megs. Um, anything below uh, 1K, keeping a separate... Uh, little thing, but you want a few things below 1K. Uh, 100 ohm resistors are sometimes uh, useful, as are 1 ohm resistors for testing some at, uh, at some at points. But yeah, definitely get some 100 ohms. Also, uh, definitely get some uh, 470 ohm. And all these are 1 watt. I don't even bother stocking anything um, under 1 watt resistors. You know, for the most part, <clears throat> they're cheap enough. I'm not building uh, to scale or, or anything like that. If I was, I would stock, um, you know, like half watt, maybe quarter watt resistors, but I don't, uh, I don't bother because most of the stuff I do are repairs and, um, you know, so I just stick to one watt. It makes things a lot simpler. I don't have to stock 20 different things. But on uh, larger value resistors, um, you're going to want to stock a few of these five watts and also some two watts as well. Um, I use usually keep my two watt resistors in another little bin, and I try to keep a, just a cross section of a few different things. There's 150 ohm, 471 k, uh, 5.1. These are used a lot in uh, power sections, like uh, dropping resistors in power sections. 4.7. These are two watts, but 1k is very common. 5.1k is common. Basically what you'll want to do with these is look at power sections of some very common amplifiers and that'll give you some uh, direction on what to order and you know what to keep in stock. All right, as far as electrolytic capacitors, um, this is what I keep them in, at least for now. And it does the job okay. I, if I were gonna stock more of the FNTs, here, here's an FNT for instance. If I were gonna stock these normally, they're a bit bigger so um, I would need a probably a larger bin than this. I do stock, sometimes I'll get um, I'll get these Illinois because they are rated at 500 volts and sometimes you need 500 volt uh, 22 microfarad capacitors. So sometimes I venture out, but these are what I get mainly. Um, these are generic capacitors that you can get through Antique Electronic Supply. Never had one fail on me yet, knock on wood. At least not that I'm aware of. I mean, I've had a lot of uh, amps go out the door. And maybe somebody took it to another tech or something that I'm not aware of, but I doubt it. This one is uh, 350 volts, but most of the ones in here are, uh, the larger ones at least, are, are 450. You will want to stock a variety of, of things uh, for different things you might work on. If you're going to work on um, amplifiers with no transformer, you will want to stock uh, a few different values uh, in 160 volt, okay, because those, um, that's the rating you will need for uh, transformerless amplifiers or, you know, old radios that uh, are all American 5 radios and things like that will use these 160 volt capacitors. This one's a 220 microfarad. Um, that is uh, a lot higher of a value than you see in a lot of those amplifiers, but sometimes I will stick a large one. If I have an especially noisy amp, I will go ahead and stick a big 220 microfarad in there. Uh, just try to get rid of some of that noise. Uh, 100 microfarad is very common in those uh, type of amplifiers, so you'll definitely want to stock some of these. 160 volt, 100 microfarad. Um, this one, not quite so much. 100 microfarad at 350 volts. I just happen to have those. Uh, this is a th this is something entirely different. This is a thousand microfarad. This is for like um, this is for like solid, more like solid state stuff. <clears throat> but for tube stuff, uh, you'll want 47 microfarads at uh, whoops, 47 microfarad at 450 volts. You'll want to stock some of those. Um, you'll also want to stock that same value, 47 microfarad at 160 volts um, for those transformerless amplifiers. You also want to stock that same value. Uh, 47 microfarad at 
uh, 50 volts. Uh, you could also do it at 25 volts, but I usually stop at 50 because 50, anything that requires, um, anything that has a 25 volt, I'd usually just stick a 50 in because they're so cheap anyway, it really it doesn't make that big of a difference. Um, 33 microfarad at 450 volts, you want to stock these because you do see them sometimes, they're a little bit, uh, a little bit more rare. Actually, if you wanted to skip stocking those, like for your first order, you'd probably be okay. I also stock that value in uh, 50 volt variety um, because it's nice to have these to experiment on bypass capacitors. I do not stock that value uh, in the 160 volt variety. Um, the 22s, usually you can get away with just uh, having your standard 450 on hand, but again, uh, I usually tr like to keep a few 500s as well because you do every now and then run across uh, amplifier with you know higher voltages so you want to uh, it's nice to have those on hand but you usually can get away with 450 um, here's a 22 microfarad at 160 volts you'll want to stock it in this value as well because uh, again this is used a lot in those transformerless amplifiers widow makers whatever you want to call them series filament here's a 10 microfarad at 160 volts I usually stock 10 microfarad uh, at 450 volts as well, but I'm out of those at the moment. I need to order those. I stock uh, 10 microfarad at 50 volts. 4.7s are also nice to have because sometimes you know you want a bypass capacitor on something, but you don't want to make it a real big one. So you're, you know, you, you need to ex be able to experiment with some smaller values, and it's nice to have these on hand for that. Uh, here's a 2.2 microfarad also so so that's essentially what I stock in electrolytic capacitors in um, resistors and in regular signal uh, coupling capacitors I hope um, I hope this has been instructional uh, I did not show you my 5 watt resistors that I stock but uh, on 5 watt resistors you know again that's that's something you want to to look into probably yourself if you're going to be servicing a lot of like uh, fender amps, for instance, uh, you'll want to look at fender power supplies mainly and see what values are used the most um, in the power supplies. And, you know, you'll want to get some of those uh, for that, that value. So just think about what it is you normally service and then look at the schematics for those and kind of kind of surmise what it is you need. You really should keep in stock. So yeah, that's pretty much it. If you're gonna be doing this sort of thing, it definitely helps to keep things in stock. It's a big pain in the ass to have to stop what you're doing and order parts uh, for each and everything that you service. It speeds it up for, uh, if you're doing this for other people, it will speed the process up for them so they don't have to wait on their equipment quite so much. You can't keep everything in stock, but you know you can keep enough in stock that you know nine times out of ten you will have what you need. So I hope this video has been helpful, and if you guys haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button below. And for now, y'all take care.